Okay, welcome to the next stage. I'm just modifying this mandrel by giving myself a little more room behind the taper. And the old lathe is doing well. That's a quarter inch cut on inch and three quarter bar at 600 RPM. Not a problem for the student. Uh, because it won't fit through my headstock and it's quite away from the chuck, I wasn't brave enough to part it off, so I've just stuck it in the saw. That does mean I'll have to flip it around and face it. I'll just grip it lightly and try not to leave jaw marks. This is a bit of an ad hoc designed on the fly thing. Um, there's ways I could have done this better, but it'll be okay. Um, I'll let my facing tool run across there and think about the next stage. There's going to be a little bit more interesting machining later in this video. Um, in the mill, it'll be done with the boring head, but it will be interesting, I think, possibly. So, next thing I need to do is cut myself another piece of stock. This is eventually going to be bored out fit over that mandrel um, but I'm not sure quite sure the order of operations yet I think I'll bore it first there's my manual post up I didn't leave any significant jaw marks on that not, just by getting it gently and not not machining anything too aggressively um, this is my new bit of stock. Now I need to attach it to this bar for by means of what for holding it in the machine, in the mill, somehow, possibly by welding. Then I need to get the boring head to go round it and turn a radius on the end of it as if it's an external feature. So this is the kind of setup I'm thinking of. I've just offered things in place roughly. I have just welded that. Uh, piece of stock on there. I've also bored out the middle. It's not to the final OD yet, but I just want to see, final ID rather, I just want to see if this setup is going to be possible. I'm trying to cut a radius and an angle on the top of this. and I've got a boring head set up to cut on the inside as if I'm making a, an external feature. What I'm trying to achieve is both a radius and an angle, about a four inch radius and an angle equivalent to this angle on the sort of die half that I'm making. Um, some of you guys have better work out what I'm up to. I'm just going to eyeball the angle and tap the vise around a bit and jiggle things around a bit because I think this is going to be possible. Um, I think it's going to work. If I can get the angle, and that's, needs, that's surprising, that needs quite a bit of, the angle there is steeper than it looks, but I think it's good enough just to eyeball it using the slots and the looking down from overhead. It's almost as good as any measurement because the, the old can is distorted anyway. I'm just going to have to jiggle my table and my vice angle around until I can get round it at the right angle, but here we go. I'm sorry about the shaky camera work, but I've got one hand. I'm trying to keep it as close as possible. We're getting close. Um, <clears throat> so I'm just going to eyeball this from above. I think it's as good as any any fancy measurement I could take to be honest with the reference points that I've got. So I'll get some strap clamps on the vise, I'm there on the angle, then I'll tweak the diameter of the boring head or the radius of the boring head. Um, I think I can find a way to measure that, just touch off, swing it 180 and, and uh, measure that distance there. In fact, what I'm going to do is come round to here, touch my tool on here, just jiggle it until it's in contact, or very nearly in contact there, 
again this is not a super critical measurement 10,000 either way would be good enough now if I um, turn the head 180 I can take a measurement I think from here to the cutting end there see what see what kind of diameter I'm going to end up uh, creating ultimately what radius I'm going to create on the end of the part of the machine what have we got four and one eighth that's the diameter I want what I've actually got is if I can not be too clumsy three five fifty I uh, think I need to increase my diameter by 575, so increase the radius by half of that, which is uh, 280. That would be 576. So, yeah, I'm going to move the boring head um, to increase the, the radius by 280,000 and see if it gets us in the ballpark. Right, I've done that. I've moved that an extra 280 thou off centre, snugged up the gibbs. It's a little bit off centre, but I think it's okay. This is a pretty rigid setup and a pretty rigid machine. It's a substantial boring head and bar, so I think we're in with a chance. I'm going to take light, ginger, careful cuts for a start. Uh, it might actually be better on heavier cuts sometimes, these things bars chatter more on lighter cuts. And I'll just check final check for clearance including with my table, my vice and anything else that might come into the way. I'm working a bit backwards here. I know I'm I know some people say it'd be better to cut on the downstroke, pushing the part and the vice down to the table. And it would probably be better to cut forwards rather than sort of trying to pull the tool at the bar but with with a sharp bit and uh, going carefully I think we'll be fine okay it did just chatter on the entry there but the, these things do happen sometimes uh, I can see I'm a little low on centre height so I'll just correct that and come back at the same cut there we are and that's looking better I'm just judging the centre height of the part by the by how well that crescent how evenly that crescent shape forms top and bottom. Now I've geared it up to a 50 thou cut and it's fine actually that chatter is gone. Um, so I'll probably get a bit braver and increase the cut. I'm not going to increase the speed because I know it's going to chatter with a with the bar that length. I'll probably just work my way across. Gradually get braver with the cuts if I don't feel any any movement or vibration. And we'll bring you back in a minute when we get a bit further in. Right, I did get a little bit braver with the cuts and it didn't make any unpleasant noises. So uh, working my way across. No point filming it all. It took a few minutes to get this down but not too long. Right, I did have to pull the work back into the vice a little bit because I hit a small snag here, I ran out of travel. So I'm just now, yeah, that's gone through it. Should be able to get all the way to the end of the part this time. Um, yeah, once I know it, I'll go all the way. I'll take a bit of a heavier cut there. It takes uh, 60, 70 thou, no problem. I'm not going to push it any harder. I'm not in a big rush to snap the welds off or lift the vice off the table or do anything unpleasant that's going to hurt. So we'll just keep on making cuts. I think this is pretty much the final cut. Uh, I won't show you it all, but you can see the setup. It's a big vice, it's a big meal, it's a fairly sturdy head and bar doing really well. 
Okay, this is just the end of the final cut. And I think that's gone well. I'm always fascinated by the shapes formed by the intersection of curves. This is a sort of a four inch, no, a two inch radius intersecting uh, a three quarter inch radius on a, say, 30 degree angle. And that's the kind of shape you end up with. And uh, now I have to make a female version of this, which I can do in almost the same setup. So I'll leave the boring head as it is. That's enough for this video, I think. I'm going to go and deburr this and get ready, get sorted out. And please stay tuned for the next part. Thanks for watching. Good night.